Have, so you, tried, have you tried sand? <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone has tried it says they wish they hadn't. <laughs> no, this is fine. And the, 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 this is a cotton duck, and the table underneath it is a, a continuous sheet of granite that is nice and evil, even and level. So now he's taking the dross that forms on the top of the, um, the, the cauldron out of there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. My kids are still pretty young, so you never know. Just adding scrap to it. Yes, okay. and that because they they when they when it's in the big pot, it's let's say at 400 degrees, and they need to cool it down to 340. Oh, so they're doing it to cool it. Yeah, they're oh, cooling it down to the proper casting temperature. 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, something like that. It's different for each alloy. 70 is higher, and 30 is lower, and 50 percent is. So I, and I can't remember exactly. What's what the it. coolest that they can? Um, what's the coolest that they can um, stir it at? Um, with 30%, if it gets down around 300, it starts to cake up on the, the rim of the pot. Okay. So. I can't believe they made it that hot, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it has to flow very evenly. Yeah. If it doesn't, you're out of luck. If it doesn't flow, it just bunches up. scrap. We're going to get some more cooling now. The top is a little hot. We're casting around the 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. It doesn't splash much. Once in a while you get a, a little piece that lands on your arm or something. But not really. To, to, to help burn the impurities out of it. You pour the olive oil in and then you stir the pot around and it mixes it all up and the impurities come to the top. I don't know why. Uh, we, for, for a long time we used um, uh, wax. Uh, we used sulfur for a while. 
And olive oil, I, I, I much prefer. <laughs> much nicer smell. <laughs> the other thing that we use, the other kitchen item that we use is we use, um, for years, when you're soldering, the sides of your iron have to be black. So you had to come up with some material to make the sides black. And for years, we used rubber. Because you know when you put rubber on a very hot surface, it'll burn onto it and make it black. Well, we discovered you could also do that with garlic. So, so we use we use garlic to, to blacken the sides of the iron and olive oil to uh, purify the metal. So, huh? That's right. That's right. Is that the stretch saying that that's where the concept of pizza and pipes came from? Pipes and pizzas. Absolutely. Have a planer here? Yeah. Yeah, it used to belong to Molar. What do you say? It used to belong to the Molar or Oh, okay, yeah. Now they're going to pour it from the um, pot into the sled. sort of slowly creeps into it. Usually we'll get a full sheet. They took so much out of the pot during the cooling process that it ended short, but that's okay. <coughs> so <clears throat> after the pipe metal is cast, we store it flat. Um, out in another part of the shop. And you gotta let it age for a couple of months. If you try and make pipes out of it right now, it will have memories. It will, if you, if you, if you, it won't stay round. Um, and I don't know why, but the aging process is part of what you need to do with the so that it doesn't have the memory. Then we put it on a drum planer and we plate it down to specific thicknesses. Um, anywhere between, let's say, 1.3 millimeters to 0.4 millimeters, um, generally sort of uh, decreasing in 0.1 millimeter increments. And then we roll it up and put it on the rack over there for so it's ready for whenever we need it. Um, then what we do is we, 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 we cut the pipes out, and when you cut out the pipes, you cut out the shape of the body, as it's flattened out. You can't cut things out that are round. So you gotta figure out how, how, what the diameter of each individual pipe is and then what the size of it is when it's actually flattened out. And when you, you cut out the bodies, the bodies are long rectangles. You also cut out the feet. And the feet are 
sort of shaped like slices of hives. Because the feet get rolled up into a cone, the bodies get rolled up into a cylinder. And the pie shape is the shape that will end up looking like a, uh, a cone. And you have to mark the width of the mouth on it. Um, you always keep track of what note it is because you don't want to attach the C body to the B foot. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, just stay right there. Stay right there. And then after you have everything cut out, then you start making different parts of the pipe. Here again is a, it's a body and a foot in the flat with, see the little part on it that's been scribed? That's the, the shape of the mouth for the body and the shape of the mouth for the foot. And then the first thing you do is you round the pipes up, both the body and the foot, so that it's a rough cylinder shape and a rough cone shape. And then after they're rounded up, then you have to solder the seam here and solder the seam here. And um, I don't have, what well, here we go. And here's a foot, you can pass these around, with the, uh, the seam soldered and a body with the seam soldered. <clears throat> Then, then with the body, you, you have to, I mean, with the foot, you have to put a languid on it. Because you can't just have a foot leading up to an open body. That would make no sound. It would be like just blowing through a tube. And what you have to do is contain and direct the sound so that the sound of the pipe comes out of the foot and is directed against the upper lip of the pipe. Lower lip, upper lip. And that's what the languid is for. So you take another piece of metal, which has a, a very sharp edge, planed onto it, and you solder it on the end, on the top of the foot. And after you do that, <clears throat> then you solder the body and the foot together. And then you got to clean it, and you got to polish it, and, and it gets a tuner. We put tuners on our pipes, as opposed to slotting them or cone tuning them. And our tuners are made out of uh, aluminum, to sheet aluminum. They last a long time and they don't rust. <laughs> if you use coke steel the way they used to in the old days, it, they rust and then the rust binds it to the pipe and then it's impossible to turn. So that's basically it for this stock. Um, now, do you paint the metal to, before you solder it? Yeah, we either paint it, the paint we call size, okay. and basically okay. it's, it's, it's powdered paint and gum arabic and water. And we use the gum arabic because that's what makes it stick to the pipe. Um, if you try and if you were just to roll up a pipe, body or foot, and solder it without the paint, or you put tape on it also, without the tape, then the body would just melt. It would just melt clean away. You need to you need to have one small portion of the pipe bare for the seam. And the rest of it needs to be protected so that the pipe itself doesn't just melt completely. And that's what the size is for, the red stuff, and what the tape is for. <clears throat>